Hey everyone, today let's know some of the fascinating theories behind the freaky Friday the 13th. Let's start the video, but before that, I request you to subscribe to the channel and like this video so that I can bring more exciting ones like this. There are plenty of superstitions out there, but none have woven themselves into the fabric of our culture quite like Friday the 13th. It's inspired books, songs, and one of the most successful horror movie franchises of all time. But despite giving us anxiety, the origins of this notorious date on the calendar remain largely unknown to most. Part of superstition surrounding Friday the 13th comes from the Christian Bible. During the Last Supper, there were 13 guests. Jesus and his 12 apostles, one of which, Judas, would eventually betray him. Since then, some have believed in superstition regarding 13 guests at a dinner table. This slowly extended to be an overall feeling that the number itself was bad luck. Another comes from Norse mythology, more specifically in the form of the trickster god Loki. Loki tricked the blind god Hur into killing his brother Baldir with a dart of mistletoe. Baldir's mother, Frigg, had previously ordered everything in existence to never harm her son, except the mistletoe, which she viewed as incapable of harm. Some accounts also say that Baldir's death took place at a dinner held for 12 gods before it was interrupted by Loki, the 13th. On the very unlucky Friday, October 13, 1307, Philip IV of France had members of the Templar arrested. He was growing uneasy with their power and covetous of their riches. There were trials, tortures, and many of the knights were burnt at the stake, eventually leading to the superstition of Friday the 13th as a cursed and evil day. This is a take that's been drummed up in recent years, most visibly in Dan Brown's best-selling novel, but in reality, the unlucky combination of Friday and 13th didn't appear until around the turn of the 20th century. Points to a 1907 book by a stockbroker named Thomas Lawson titled Friday the 13th, it tells the tale of a stockbroker who picks that particular day to manipulate the stock market and bring all of Wall Street down. The book sold fairly well all the time, moving 28,000 copies in its first week. And it must have stuck a chord with early 20th century society, as it's said to have caused a real-life superstition among stockbrokers regarding trading and buying stocks on the 13th. While not the first to combine the dates, Lawson's book is credited with popularizing the notion that Friday the 13th is bad news. On Friday, July 13, 1923, the United States got a brand new landmark. The famed Hollywood sign was officially christened on that day as a promotional tool for a new housing development. But before the sign took on its familiar image, it initially read Hollywood Land, the full name of the development that was being built on the hills above Los Angeles. The sign took on its current Hollywood look in 1949 when after two decades of disrepair, the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce decided to remove the last four letters and just maintain the first nine. According to heavy metal lore, the genre was born Friday, February 13, 1970 with the UK release of Black Sabbath's self-titled debut album. Bands like Steppenwolf had laid the foundation in the years before, but those first dissonant Devil's Tritone chords of Black Sabbath were the true birth of the dark, brooding, rocking subculture. In the 1930s and into the 40s, the folks of French Lick, Indiana, the town board decreed all black cats in the town were to wear a bell around their neck every Friday the 13th, so that whenever any is near, they can be cautious about their movement.
In order to prove that there was no curse on the number, Captain William Fowler, who had fought the 13 Civil War battles, started a club in 1882 that spat in the face of superstition. Members would meet on the 13th of the month at 13 past the hour and sit 13 at a dining table. They sought to disapprove the myth and others along with it. Open umbrellas lined the dining hall and members would willingly break glass waiting for a so-called curse to befall them. This wasn't just a club for eccentrics either. Five presidents would become honorary members of the 13 club, namely Chester Arthur, Grover Cleveland, Benjamin Harrison, William McKinley and Theodore Roosevelt. Well, that's it for today. I hope you're liking Nerdy's Discoveries. Can't wait for the next video to learn more and be fascinated about. See you on the next. Bye.